Today I'm going to make a quick and simple guide for beginners on what to do if your crested gecko lays eggs and you're not sure if they're fertile or not. So first things first, and a lot of you probably already know this, but just in case you're not aware, female crested geckos often will still lay eggs even if a male is not present. It's totally normal and natural, it's just their body naturally cycling. Same thing as far as chickens go, how hens will still continue to cycle and lay their eggs regularly even without a rooster. Now, with that being said, for obvious reasons, if there's not a male present, those eggs will not be fertile. If you have a female laying eggs, whether she's breeding or not, you want to make sure that she has a safe and dark and damp place to lay her eggs. You can achieve this by getting plastic Tupperware or large deli cups and cutting a small hole that's just wide enough for her to easily climb in and out of. And you can use wet moss as a substrate or damp eco-earth. I personally use moss and have been getting by with that with no issue for years. You also want to make sure that the female is maintaining a healthy weight and that she always has access to a proper diet, food, and water. If you're feeding her Pangea or Rapashi, that should already have calcium and vitamin supplements mixed into it. However, you want to make sure that you're also supplementing with live insects such as crickets or dubia roaches, and you want to feed those insects a healthy diet of fruits and vegetables. And you're also going to want to coat those insects in a calcium and vitamin powder so that your gecko can get the appropriate levels of calcium and vitamins that it needs. All captive reptiles need this, but you especially want to make sure that egg-laying females have access to this. In addition to putting this on their insects, you can also shake some of this into a small dish to keep in their tank at all times. That way, if they feel that they need it, their bodies will naturally crave it, and they can go over to the dish and lick it up and get the extra calcium that they need. Egg-laying females will typically lay one clutch of eggs every month, and this could last anywhere from four to ten months, give or take. A clutch typically consists of two eggs, although once in a while you may only find one. Eggs that are discolored or moldy are likely not viable and are called slugs, but it's always a good idea to candle it just to make sure you're not throwing out a possibly good egg. Candling the egg is rather simple. Now please keep in mind that there are a lot of reptile species where you really don't want to disturb the eggs because if you shift it the wrong way you may accidentally cause the embryo to drown. However, crest gecko eggs are not quite that fragile and if you turn the egg, as long as you're gentle with it, you should not hurt the embryo. With that being said, you do want to keep handling to a minimum, but it will not hurt them as long as you handle them properly if you need to move them around and candle them to get them into a good container to incubate them in. Candling the eggs is rather simple. You just get the eggs, go into a dark room, and hold a small light up to the egg. If the egg is clear and completely see-through, no shadows, no veins, no circle, nothing, just looks yellow, you can see right through the egg when you hold up the light, then it is not fertile. If the egg is fertile, you're going to see, as this picture indicates, there's going to be a red shadowy looking ring, kind of like a Cheerio, in the center of that egg. It is recommended that you put the part of the egg with the circle facing up when you incubate it. I use Pangea Hatch to incubate my eggs. That is this dark pebbly looking stuff right here. Rapashi is another good brand, and they have instructions on the side. What I do with this Pangea hatch is I soak it in water for a few minutes, and then I drain the water. I let the hatch medium drip dry for a while until it is no longer dripping. If you squeeze or pet the incubation medium and it's still dripping or has a lot of water in it, you need to let it drain even longer. You do not want to put the eggs on it when it's still soaking wet. You want it damp, you want it a little moist, but you don't want it retaining a ton of water or it's going to create too much humidity, which could cause the eggs to go moldy. You can see when it's dry, it's much lighter, and when it's moist, it's nice and dark. You can never let it dry out, so make sure you check on the eggs periodically. If done correctly and in a proper container, it should retain its moisture and humidity until the eggs are ready to hatch. Once the hatching medium has drip dried, you can put it into a container. I use little deli cups, they seem to work well. And I get a thumbtack and I poke little holes all along the side, just enough so it can get some little bit of airflow and ventilation. I also like to label them just because it's good to stay organized and keep track of who laid the eggs and the dates that they were laid. Once I have everything set up, I put a lid back on it and I put it inside one of these little storage cubes so that that way it can stay in a nice, safe, dark place in a room temperature room until they're ready to hatch. I check on them periodically just to make sure everything's looking good. 
and that nothing's getting moldy. As you will see in these pictures, as the embryo grows and develops, the eggs will actually expand and get larger. It's very interesting to see because if you're used to birds, like chickens for example, their eggs will stay about the same size, but visibly crest gecko eggs get huge before they're ready to hatch. So earlier I showed you what it looks like with a fresh embryo when you candle the egg. Here's a couple different views of different stages of embryo development. These ones were more so towards the end. You don't really want to mess around with the eggs too much, but if you're ever unsure about one, you can very gently, very carefully candle it. Just make sure your hands are clean before. In the past, before I moved all of my females to paper towels as their substrate, I had some in bioactive terrariums because I just really love bioactive enclosures. So as a result, they would sometimes hide their eggs from me and not lay in their lay boxes, and I would find them and have to candle them, and some of them were further along in development, expected because I just wasn't aware that the egg had been deposited there and buried. Now, since the bioactive enclosure was done properly and all the humidity levels and temperature and everything was functioning right, the embryos survived and were developing, and the eggs ended up hatching just fine after I found them and moved them into a deli cup. But here you can see what those eggs look like. You can see that instead of the small little ring, the Cheerio-looking embryo like in the earlier stages, you see more of a shadow as that embryo has grown and is starting to form into the shape of an actual gecko. It's cool because the really dark circles you see there are the eyes, and you can even see the tail at a certain angle. Here's a look at an egg that was getting ready to hatch. This was when I was new to hatching geckos, and the clutch mate of this one had already hatched, and it was, I think, just a day, maybe close to two days later, and this one hadn't shown any signs it was going to hatch yet. Sometimes before hatching, the eggs look like they're sweating a little bit. So I wasn't sure what was going on with it. I was a beginner. So I candled it, held the flashlight up to it, and I could see that the embryo was alive. Sometimes you can see movement, which is really cool, but it was huge. You can perfectly see the head right there. There's the head, there's an eye, there's the other eye. Right there is the nose, forehead. And funny enough, shortly after this, the egg ended up hatching, and it was a healthy and beautiful little lily white baby. Now, if you incubate their eggs on the cooler side, they're gonna take a little bit longer to hatch, but the geckos tend to be more robust. They're larger when they hatch if you incubate them on the slower side, and usually healthier. If you incubate them on the warmer spectrum, they will hatch faster, but they're usually a little bit smaller, so it's probably best if you fall somewhere in the middle or err on the slightly cooler side. I know it takes more patience, but the results are worth it. I'm going to put a link in the description below of what to do when your eggs hatch and how to set up and care for freshly hatched little babies. So make sure you check that video out so that that way you know what to do when your eggs start to hatch. And as a quick little side note before we go, because this freaked me out the first time I hatched geckos, sometimes when they hatch, they act dead. They might be real fresh out of the egg and they might just sit there. They might look scrunched up a little bit. They might be real stiff if you go to pick them up. That's normal. Don't freak out. It really scared me the first couple times. But think about it. They have been cramped up inside that egg growing. They haven't been out moving their muscles yet or stretching out. So they're probably pretty stiff when they hatch. And they're probably very tired from the effort of getting out of the egg. Hatching can sometimes be a long process. And then before you know it, when you're moving that baby into its new enclosure, even if it's acting stiff or dead, it could spring into action just like that and startle the heck out of you. Because trust me, it's happened to me. And then they can just start darting and running really fast. So always be prepared. I like to open up the deli cup and transport them with the deli cup inside of their terrarium. So that way, if they do spring up and start running, they're not going to escape. They'll just jump out of the deli cup into their terrarium and be safe and contained in there. So that's a little heads up if you're new to this. Incubating and hatching crested gecko eggs is fairly simple. 
a lot of people are getting into the crested gecko hobby and I think it's great on one hand because reptiles are wonderful pets. I think reptiles are kind of misunderstood creatures so I think it's great that more and more people are starting to get into them. But also please make sure you're doing this responsibly. Please make sure that you are set up and you have the time and the money to get into this hobby and to take care of the added babies that you're going to be hatching. And make sure you have a backup plan. If you can't sell them right away, make sure you're okay with that. Make sure you have the space and the time and the extra side money to take care of them until you can find safe and responsible homes to send them to. You shouldn't get into any hobby involving animals just to make money. While side money is nice, your main goal should be getting into it because you have a passion for that animal and you enjoy spending time with them and working with them and trying to better improve the species or the breed. Always make sure that you do this with a goal already in mind and a backup plan in case things don't go according to how you thought they would. And also remember, crested geckos change a lot in the first year or two. Raising crested geckos is a game of patience. Their colors and traits can rarely change with each shed. And that's pretty cool to get to watch, but like I said, it does take patience. So always make sure you're prepared and do your research before you're getting into this. It can be incredibly rewarding, but it does take time.